this is like the biggest thing that you want to make sure. This is what changed the sleep training game for me. I sleep trained my toddler in only two days without using the cry it out method. If you wanna know exactly how I sleep trained my one and a half year old, keep on watching. Hey everyone, if you are new, my name is Janae and I create motherhood related videos created to help and encourage new moms in the struggles of parenthood. Click the subscribe button and the little bell next to it and the thumbs up like button so that the YouTube algorithm can push this video to other moms like yourself. I've been thinking of the times when we'd stay up all night. You tell me your story. I officially sleep trained my daughter when she was 19 months old. Why, you may ask? I'll give you a little bit of a background preface so you can put some context to how we got here and then I'll be sharing with you exactly what I did. So basically, you are going to need a pen and paper or your notes tab in your phone so you can write down exactly the steps that I did if you want to hopefully see the results that I had. Why at 19 months old did I wanna sleep train? Well, because I was only two weeks away from giving birth to my second child and she was sleeping horribly. We were still waking up multiple times throughout the night and being awake for hours on end and along being pregnant, you know, the tiredness that comes along with being pregnant, chasing around a toddler in the day. I was also up for hours in the night with my 19 month old toddler trying to get her back to sleep and nothing worked. I tried other sleep training methods in the past. I even posted a video on how I got my eight month old sleep trained for naps and that went well for a while until it didn't anymore. I said, I cannot be waking up like this. I literally won't be able to tend to you when I have a newborn in bed next to me because she's gonna need all my attention. So like, what? Like, no, like we can't do this. So like your sleep needs to get better because it's gonna be impossible, it's gonna be chaotic, we can't do this. I literally waited until the last second, but it got done in two days. And I got a wonderful like week and a half of a full night's sleep without waking up and having to tend to my toddler and it was great. And also for her nap time, she needed to be nighttime and nap sleep trained because for her naps, she was sleeping a good two to three hours every single day for her nap. However, to get her to sleep like that, I had to rock her to sleep and sometimes it would take 30 minutes for me to be in the room and then I'd have to lay her down ever so quietly and carefully trying not to wake her up. If you know, you know, if you know that struggle, I am here to help because gone are those days. A lot of times she would just pop right back up and start crying and I had to do the whole process again of rocking and ever so quietly trying to lay her down in her crib without waking her up. And with a newborn, that's just not realistic. Being a stay at home mom and my husband working all day during the day, I can't, that's not realistic for me to be, to do that with my toddler every day for her naps and sleep. So that is why we are here. So here we go. What exactly did I do? Side note, I do have my phone with all my notes on here, so I don't miss any little detail for you guys. Instead of starting with her nap time sleep, trying to get her nap to go to sleep on her own for her naps, I was told to start at nighttime. So day one, we started at night. So come nighttime, I did literally every single thing the same. So whatever your nighttime routine currently looks like, that's what I did. I did our nighttime routine. We read the books, we did everything. And normally I end with rocking her to sleep. Like I mentioned before for naps, I rock her to sleep and then I'd carefully try to lay her down without waking her up. On night one, before she fell asleep in that rocking chair, she was almost asleep. I got up out of the rocking chair and put her in her crib. So she was fully awake. And of course, as you can imagine, that raised a whole bunch of heck for her and she started crying and like, what are you doing mom? Like, of course there's gonna be some pushback because if you got your, if your child is used to going to sleep one way and then all of a sudden you're like not doing that, of course the first day there's gonna be some resilience, there's gonna be some tears, there's gonna be some pushback, but it needed to be done. So I put her in her crib, I laid her down, I tried to lay her down, you know, of course she's almost two year old. So she's like getting up, standing up on the side of the crib, crying like, mommy, mommy, pick me up, pick me up. But I kept trying to lay her down. And even though she was standing up, I told her that I loved her. I always tell her I love her like a million times. 
So I told her I love her, but she needs to lay down and go to sleep. And I said it firmly, but lovingly. This was also another thing that I was told because in the past I would be like, oh my gosh, like, oh, I know you want me to pick you up, but you just need to lay down. And like, no, you, I, I could not do that. I did not do that anymore. I had to say it firmly, but lovingly. I was taught this by a professional um, and it worked. So I said, I love you, honey, but you need to lay down and go to sleep with your animals with Lammy and Raffi, okay? And I left and it wasn't like I was mad. I just said it in a way that was loving but firm so she knows I'm serious and like we're not playing any games tonight, okay? Like, honey, I love you, but lay down and go to sleep. And I left the room. So the plan was to go in after a set amount of minutes, which I will tell you in a second, but the plan was to go in after said amount of minutes, reassure her, and then leave and start the timer again. So the first time that I left her room, I was gonna go until the clock hit five minutes. And then after five minutes was up, I went in and I reassured her that it was okay. And I made sure never to take her out of her crib like I previously did. I, gave, I still gave her like a little cuddle hug in her crib, but I made sure never to pick her up out of the crib. Again, it was firm, but loving. Like I'm here, I love you, but you need to go to lay down and go to sleep. Good night, and then I'd leave again. So then the next time you would go until around seven or eight minutes if they were still crying, you'd go in again after seven to eight minutes, do the same exact thing, reassure them, be in and out. You do not wanna be in that room for like two, three, four, five minutes. Been there, done that. I feel like it just makes things harder for yourself and your child. Trust me, I've literally tried every single sleep training method that did not involve the cry it out method and nothing, nothing worked long-term. So please save yourself the hassle, the guilt, the heartbreak and just do it this way. And hopefully it will work out for you like it worked out for me. And then again, if you have to go in after those seven to eight minutes, you reassure them in and out in under a minute and then you go up until 15 minutes. Now I know 15 minutes does sound like a long time, Trust me, when I first heard this, I'm like, whoa, I don't know if I can sit there for 15 minutes, I don't know. But I'm like, all right, I'm two weeks away from giving birth, I have to do whatever it takes. So yeah, you go until the clock hits 15 minutes, you reassure them and do it again. You never go past 15, well, again, this, this is just what I did. You can do whatever you want, but for me personally, I never, would go past 15 minutes of letting her cry continuously without going in, reassuring her and um, leaving. So even if I had to do it four times, which I didn't, which I'll get into it in a second, but I never had to go more than 15 minutes to let her cry because she'd always be asleep by then. Just keep resetting it to 15 minutes each time if that is what you have to do. Because I know all kids are different, but trust me, my child, she is resilient. She. She's a mommy's girl, she is resilient. We used to co-sleep for all of her naps when she was little. Homegirl, we were still tight, but like when it came to sleep, homegirl needed, needed me, okay? I have a fighter, she's a fighter, but this worked really great for her. Um, okay, so anyway, here are some key things that really, really matter though. You want to make sure you are doing these things or not doing these things for this to work. You have to be firm when you say your good nights, I love you and lay down and go to sleep. It has to be different than your normal tone of voice because like your normal tone of voice, like it just, it just has to be different. Just trust me. It worked for me. I never really understood it until I did it and it works. This isn't something that they can play around with and maybe convince you that this isn't what you want to do with them and you know, make them, they sense that if you give them a feeling of like, like this is what you're doing and it's not up for discussion type of thing. I know they're only one or however old they are, but trust me, it works. And this is like the biggest thing that you want to make sure because I've made this mistake and this is what changed the sleep training game for me. Take this and remember it. Only go in to reassure them if they are non-stop crying for the set amount of time. So if you set your time, like if you're going up until your clock says five minutes, but they stop crying during that time for like 15, 20 seconds, restart your timer. Trust me, you don't wanna go in, like I used to just go in like right when my clock hit five minutes, no matter what state she was in, if she was quiet for like a minute of that time or not, 
I had always go in at five minutes. That was a mistake. I did not realize that was hindering our progress and actually making it a lot harder. Me intervening as much as I did in the past made it harder for her. I thought it would make it better for her because I'm like, no, she needs to know I'm there and I'm not neglecting her and X, Y, Z. No, it only made it harder. It only made her scream 10 times worse. The more I went in and the more I went out, it just made her more exasperated. So make sure when you set your timer, if they're on and off crying or just like whining or like, you know your child, every child cries different. You know when your child is really, really screaming like bloody murder crying or when they're just like, fussing a little bit. So yeah, only go in if they're like crying for like the full set amount of minutes and not letting off. If the clock hits four minutes and 30 seconds, because this has happened to me, if it hits four minutes and 30 seconds and then your child stops crying for like 15 seconds straight and then starts again, you have to reset your timer. This is the game changer. The next tip is to start at bedtime. Do not try to switch up and implement these things starting at nap time. Start day one at bedtime. And then the next day for naps, you do the same thing that you would, like do their normal nap time routine, except for instead of rocking them, just like you did the previous night at bedtime, you or however you get your child to sleep. Instead of doing that, go until they're still tired, like they're almost asleep, but not quite and then put them in their crib while they're still awake. And this brings me to one of the final things is to change the routine gradually. I cannot say it more enough. I cannot say it more enough. That didn't make sense, but you guys get what I'm saying. Do everything gradually. So for me personally, I used to read her three books at nap time and rock her anywhere from five to 45 minutes until she fell asleep. So over the course of a couple of days, I just started reading two books and then one book. And now just because of my life and having two under two, I don't have time for that. Um, so I don't read her any books and she goes to sleep just fine. No crying, no resistance. She knows the drill, but it's not like it was just like, okay, we're sleep training. You're going from read, I'm going from reading you three books and rocking you for 40 minutes to now you're reading no books, I'm putting you in your crib and I'm leaving. Like, no, I think that that's a little harsh if you ask me, but again, you're gonna do your own thing, but it worked really great for us doing everything gradually over the course of like a couple of days or if you have more time, a couple of weeks. It's not just like an abrupt, everything is changing in one day, you know, because I feel like there'd be a lot of more, a lot more resistance and crying and whoever you are watching this and you wanna sleep train your child, I know sleep training is hard. No matter which way you do it, it is hard hard because there's going to be some level of tears that you hear. And trust me, my heart broke, but I knew in the end it was going to be better for her and me and everyone else involved. And it so was worth it. So do it gradually. So to give you a little snippet into how this realistically plays out, what nap time realistically looks like now that my toddler is almost two. And then I have a baby who just turned four months old. This is realistically how this has worked. It looks like me telling her, it's like prepping her beforehand, like when we're playing um, and, or whatever she's doing, hey, nap time in 10 minutes, Sagey. And then one time passes, hey, two more minutes and then we're gonna go take a nap. So I'm like prepping her mentally for nap time coming up. I think that really helps. And then when it's time for nap, I say, okay, it's time for nap now. Let's go take a nap with Lammy and Rafi. So I bring her up to her room. So once I bring her up to her room, I'm only in her room for literally a minute because my other daughter is usually downstairs and she's only four months old, so I can't leave her for long unless she's sleeping and she's normally awake. So I bring her into her room. I close her curtains. I put her sound machine on, I get her Bobo because she usually asks for her Bobo, which is a pacifier if you're not familiar with the term. I give her a big snuggle hug, give her kisses, say, okay, I'm gonna lay you down now. Like I explained to her every step. That's just what works for us personally. I know a lot of people don't, but I like explain everything. I mean, I don't tell her like, oh, we're going to close the curtains now, but like, I'd be like, okay, now you're going to take a nap with Lammy and Raffi as I lay her down. She's fully awake looking at me, you know, cause we were just playing literally two minutes ago downstairs, but I had prepped her up until this point. So I say, okay, have a good nap with your animal friends. I love you. See you when you wake up, close the door and she falls asleep within a couple of minutes. 
Oh, another thing I highly recommend is a monitor. If you don't have a baby monitor while you're sleep training, I highly recommend you get one just so that you have a little bit more of peace of mind so you can watch them the whole time as they're crying or fussing or doing whatever they're doing. Um, and then you can actually take note of like, know when they fell asleep, if they fell asleep, which they will eventually. But um, yeah, so that gives a lot of peace of mind. And then for bedtime, bedtime, my husband usually is home. So he does bedtime with her now. He usually reads a book or two with her, rocks her for like up to five minutes. Um, and then puts her to sleep. But the whole process takes like 10 minutes or less, whereas it used to take like 45 minutes to an hour. So yeah, sleep training this specific way with the thanks of a professional helping me along the way has been life-changing. Now I'm going to share with you guys the time frames that my daughter, like what happened on night one, nap two, nap three, like what happened. I have it on my phone. So night one, she was totally asleep in under 20 minutes. I went in once at the seven minute mark and then out and I was in and out in less than a minute. She woke up at 4.38 a.m. fussing and crying, talking on and off for 35 minutes, but I never went in and she laid back down at 5.13 a.m. and she slept until 8.30 a.m. So as you can see, night one was already great and I was actually surprised at how well it went because I know my daughter and I know how much of a fighter she is, but I think since she was older, she really got onto it, especially because I told her like I was firm with it and I don't normally talk firm to her like that. Um, so she's like, oh, I guess mommy's not playing. And then when I didn't go in in the night, just because she was just fussing a little bit on and off and talking, whereas normally I would have like after five minutes definitely went in and been like, oh my gosh. Day one, nap one. She took 25 minutes for her to fall asleep. I didn't go in at all because she was on and off the whole time, half asleep, half awake, fussing and not really screaming. So that was great. The first nap, I didn't even have to intervene or reassure her at all. Night two, she fell asleep just before 7.30 p.m. and it took about 20 minutes, same as the previous night. I did not go in at all this time since she was on and off crying the whole entire time. However, she definitely cried harder than yesterday, but it wasn't terrible and she was half falling asleep half the time because I was looking on the monitor. I remember she was like sitting up half asleep and then she'd like wake herself up fuss and cry for a minute and then like fall asleep. So I didn't go in at all. She fell asleep sitting up in her crib and then she laid herself down after like 10 minutes. She slept the entire night and woke up at 7 a.m. and was just chilling quietly in her crib and I got her at 7.45 a.m. So night two, she was, she was golden. Even when she did wake up in the morning, she wasn't crying like she had normally previously did. She was chilling in her crib for 45 minutes, just hanging out with her animals for 45 minutes. Like what? Okay. Nap two. I walked out the door and I walked out the door and she cried for five to 10 seconds and then knocked out. So no crying basically. Night three, no crying, and she was asleep by 7.29 p.m. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Like, does that, I, I don't know, that sounded really weird. This went fantastic for us, and I really, really hope, I know this was a long video, but I really hope this helped you out in some type of way. Make sure to subscribe, hit that subscribe button and the bell, because I'm going to make another video just giving some more tips on sleep elements, like other factors that also, I think, really help play a role on getting my daughter to sleep through the night. Of course, this is the main thing, but there is other tips and things that you might not think about. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified when I post that video. But yeah, if you guys have any other questions for me, leave a comment down below. It helps the YouTube algorithm know that you guys like my content and it'll push it out there so other moms and other parents can see my video and it can hope, hopefully help them as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I wish you guys the best of luck. This approach really, really worked great for us when we tried everything else and nothing seemed to work. So I hope it can help you guys too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. Every once in a while you seem to cross my mind See your face in a stranger as a